By learning about classical works, Zhao Mengfu pioneered the restoration of ancient Chinese art. Nicholas Poussin promoted the classical beauty of ancient Greece and Rome, launching a wave of classical paintings in France. The former was a master of Chinese painting. The latter was considered a father of French painting. What did they comprehend from their respective traditions? In French history, three young men from different eras traveled from Paris to Rome in Italy in search of inspiration. Through their efforts, European classical art regained its glory. They were Nicolas Poussin, Jean-Louis David, and Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra. In China's Yuan dynasty, Zhao Mengfu immersed himself in copying the paintings and calligraphic works of earlier dynasties. Years later, his follower, Dong Chi Chang, finally pushed the cultural restoration movement to its climax. Then one day, an Italian called Giuseppe Castiglione came to China's Forbidden City. Chinese people were able to see the three-dimensional Western painting style. Two diverse painting traditions met each other for the first time. Art masters from both cultures believed that they could develop new styles from traditional sources. Signs of their attempts can be found both in the Forbidden City and the Louvre. The post-17th century French paintings displayed in the Louvre were mostly influenced by Poussin. Poussin's own painting style derived from ancient Greece and Roman traditions. Poussin's self-portrait shows a strict and determined man. It was this determination that took him to the most glorious peak of his painting career. Poussin was born in 1594 in Normandy. When he was young, a passing painter discovered his talent for painting and led him to the world of art. At 18, he left his home and went to Paris to paint. When he was 30, he headed to Rome which, in his dreams, was the city of art. In Poussin's era, Rome and Florence were the art centers of Europe. Artists from different countries came like pilgrims to pay their respects to their master's works. Here, the ruins of ancient Greek and Roman styles, as well as Renaissance statues and paintings, can be found everywhere. Their beauty of harmony, balance and simplicity originated from ancient Greek art. Poussin was one of the pilgrims, hoping to absorb some of the ancient artistic elements. Ninety years later, in 1715, Italian Giuseppe Castiglione came across the sea to China. As the Chinese emperor began to appreciate the Western characters painted by Castiglione, classicism in painting, advocated by Poussin, was also gaining in popularity. Paris became the new art center of Europe. Chinese painter Chen Danqing shared similar experiences to Poussin and Castiglione. 
he went to the Western world to explore art and life. In Western museums, Chen saw the works of Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Rembrandt, and Poussin. Chen also saw many Chinese paintings in foreign galleries, something he hadn't been expecting. Among the Chinese paintings Chen saw were the works of Zhao Mengfu. Later on, Chen learned that Zhao, Pu San, and he were all trying to look for a way to develop themselves in the ancient classical tradition. In the Palace Museum, there's a traditional Chinese painting showing a bamboo grove. A middle-aged man dressed in a long white gown stands to the right. He was a senior official, but why was he dressed like a hermit from the countryside? Zhao was born in 1254 in Huzhou in southern China. Calligraphers Wang Shizhi, Wang Xianzhi, Yan Chenqing, and literary giant Su Dongpo all worked there at one time. They are among the greatest masters of art and literature in Chinese history. In the Yuan Dynasty, eight cultural figures appeared in Huzhou. Zhao was one of them. Huzhou was therefore known as the center of classicism during the early years of the Yuan Dynasty. Some modern scholars even call it the Florence of China in the 13th century. During the 13th century, China witnessed a great historical event. The Mongolians destroyed the Song Dynasty. Many scholars were supporters of the Song Dynasty and refused to work with the Mongolian rulers. Zhao's identity was even more complicated. He was a member of the Song Dynasty's imperial family, but became an official of the Yuan Dynasty. He was despised by other scholars for this decision. It bothered him for the rest of his life. Nevertheless, as an official, Zhao gained access to the calligraphic works of earlier dynasties. With the hope of restoring the ancient art traditions, he copied these classical works over and over again. Zhao Mengfu By copying classical works, Zhao pioneered the restoration of ancient art during the Yuan Dynasty. Prusan promoted the classical beauty of ancient Greece and Rome, ushering in a tide of classical painting in France. The former was a master of Chinese painting. The latter was considered the father of French painting. What did they comprehend from their respective traditions?
La Vessière is a researcher of French classical paintings. He speaks about the ancient traditions that influenced Poussin. L'enlèvement des Sabines, c'est un tableau euh, de Poussin. C'est d'abord un tableau d'histoire. C'est un tableau qui raconte euh, une histoire, une histoire qui est euh, qui figure dans l'histoire chez l'historien romain. This painting tells an ancient story. After the famous Trojan War, the Romans settled in Rome. Finding wives became a priority for the soldiers. The founder of Rome, Romulus, held a celebration to attract the nearby Sabines to the square. It was said that Romulus suddenly spread his cloak on the ground at the Forum. Seeing this signal, the Roman soldiers dashed towards the Sabine women and carried them away. This is the story depicted in the painting. Rubens, another painter even more famous than Poussin, depicted similar scenes in his paintings. In the painting, Rape of the Daughters of Lucippus, he illustrated the moment of emotional release in a wild and passionate way. It's been described as plunging into a sea of female bodies and swimming in it unscrupulously. At that time, many painters showed scenes of happy, everyday life with a strong religious influence. Rubens was the most famous. The chubby and fleshy women in his paintings are especially impressive. With a strong sense of motion and very imaginative stories, his paintings are magnificent and delightful. Unlike Rubens, Poussin was more serious, rigid, and a stronger adherent to tradition. He looked to Roman historians for subjects to paint. The architecture depicted in his paintings was all the product of his careful research into ancient Roman architecture. Each character had his or her prototype in ancient Roman artifacts in museums. Poussin, at the time, was in the architecture of the Greek and 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 the Greek. So his design was all from Voir comment le manteau rouge de Romulus rime avec le manteau rouge du personnage qui fuit de ce guerrier romain qui est en train de, de prendre son élan pour le pour cet enlèvement. Le cheval, le cheval blanc à gauche et, et le cheval blanc à droite se recomposent. This created a special effect. Although the topic is one of violent plunder, the painting is not filled with conflict, horror and anger. In fact, it looks rather solemn. It seems like the characters are frozen, like relief patterns. The women's marble smooth skin presents a striking contrast against the soldier's bronzy skin. It looked very much like a typical scene of European classical drama. So, the painting of the painting has a problem. It is that it is not very important to the topic, the topic of the story. I care about how many people are placed, how comfortable, how beautiful. Because if you paint, you will know that the painting has appeared in 30 people. But if you paint well, it looks like there are 100 people. You are not the only one. There are also the main characters and the main characters. There are also the main characters and the main characters. There are so many characters and the main characters. This is the most difficult thing, and it's also the most interesting thing. Poussin may have given all the people of the old days a picture. You have to think about such a big picture. How do you put it into this big picture? How do you put it into this big picture? This Poussin is the most interesting thing to say. The painting of the painting is the most interesting thing. 
Europeans found Poussin's classical paintings very refreshing, like a brisk wind from the Mediterranean, and it was to influence European painters for centuries. Influenced by Poussin, Jacques-Louis David created his famous painting, The Intervention of the Sabine Women. Classical paintings have stimulated more thinking about life's meaning than the paintings of any other schools of art. If since the Yuan dynasty, many painters have publicly stated that they were copying the works of previous dynasties. They considered it routine to copy and learn from ancient masterpieces. The autumn colors on the Chao and Hua mountains, painted by Zhao, followed the example set by ancient works. On the left, painter Dong Chi Chang wrote, this painting of Zhao Meng Fu follows the example of two well-established artists before him. The painting depicts a vast moorland with rivers and mountains. The Hua mountain stands to the right. The Chao mountain stands on the left. Trees are scattered, including poplar and pine trees. There are also plants growing between the trees. Some leaves have already fallen off and turned red or yellow, reminding us that it's fall. Reeds grow along the riverbank. Several small boats are berthed at the shore, with fishermen working quietly on board. The villagers, focusing on their daily lives, do not seem to realize what beautiful scenery is in front of their eyes. It's like a paradise on earth for the ancient Chinese. The two mountains are dark blue. The island in the center is light blue. The water and leaves take on different shades of blue. The warm red color spreads from the rooftops to the leaves and tree trunks and beyond. The island in the middle stretches to the lower section of the painting like an unfolding palm, inviting visitors to walk into the world the painter has created. was a well-known painter in the 10th century. In these paintings, said to be Dong's work, we can see similar composition to the autumn colors on the Chao and Hua mountains. They all depict scenes of lakes and mountains shrouded in clouds and fog. In another painting, said to have been painted by Wang Wei in an earlier period, 
we find characters, mountains and houses in a similar style to the autumn colours on the Chao and Hua mountains. If Zhao was learning from his predecessors, what was his personal style? Zhao believed that it was crucial to include traditional elements in paintings. Otherwise, the painting was no good, no matter how exquisite it was. This was the essence of the cultural restoration movement he had been advocating. Zhao advocated the use of traditional elements, as opposed to the meticulous and realistic painting style of previous periods, like the painting Golden Pheasant and Cotton Rose Flowers. In Zhao's Hupo on Bamboo, the bird was painted in a more concise way, with a sense of classic beauty. Emperor Qianlong of the Qing dynasty loved the painting Autumn Colors on the Chao and Hua Mountains. It was said that he even went to visit the two mountains, only to find that they were actually quite far apart, not as close as depicted in the painting. Living in a different culture and with different traditions, Pu San did similar things in his paintings. Is this work of his a truly realistic painting? Such deliberate design or arrangement occurs in this painting too. In The Shepherds of Arcadia, Poussin demonstrates his philosophical thinking. To the ancient Europeans, Arcadia was a heaven on earth. In the painting, we see three young shepherds and a young lady in front of a tomb. On the tombstone, the words, My Arcadia, are carved. Alors, il y a beaucoup d'interprétations de, euh, de cette phrase, mais en gros, elles se ramènent toutes à cette idée que même dans l'endroit le, euh, le plus joyeux, le plus florissant, le plus euh, agréable de la terre, le pays de tous les bonheurs, eh bien, la mort existe, c'est-à-dire que tout a une fin, que le bonheur n'est pas éternel. Poussin infused his critical thoughts about death in his paintings. Although, as the chief painter of the French king, he was given a luxurious home and a high salary, he felt he was losing the freedom to paint and was surrounded by jealous eyes and devious plots. A year later, he returned to Rome and never set foot in France again. Et en France au XVIIe siècle, les Poussins va être leur, leur modèle. Ils n'acceptent pas d'être considérés comme des artisans, mais euh, ils disent « nous avons des choses à dire exactement et à formuler exactement comme les poètes 
dans les, dans les poésies ou dans les pièces de théâtre euh, peuvent le faire. Donc le peintre passe du statut d'artisan, de, de, d'ouvrier, mécanique, comme on disait alors, au, au statut d'intellectuel et de, euh, de poète. On one of the ceilings of the Louvre are painted France's four historical periods and their most famous artists. Poussin is seen among these artists. The awakening of painters was a continuation of the awakening of humanity since the Renaissance, leading France into a golden age. From that time onwards, France replaced Italy as the center of European art. Poussin was certainly a pioneer. Unlike Poussin, Zhao faced a dilemma. He was accused of being a traitor to the previous dynasty, while all the traditional values had been overturned in the new dynasty. In the circumstances, he hoped to restore the old traditions through his efforts. He had once written a poem to show how he was thinking. Part of the poem reads, It is a herb when growing in the mountains, but a common grass outside the mountains. I only hope to spend my life in the mountains. Throughout his life, he was tortured with the hope of being detached from the world and by the reality of staying in it. This was also expressed in his painting, Water Village. In other words, at that time, Chinese artists had to choose between working for the court or withdrawing from society and becoming a hermit. Zhao's advocacy for ancient painting traditions brought new life to a declining art world. Painting fashions changed from the meticulous to the natural and simplistic. In terms of poetry, Zhao abandoned the sorrowful style and adopted a more optimistic form. In terms of music, he researched the origin of the Chinese zither and revitalized the Chinese music world. He learned from Wang Zhe, a master of Chinese calligraphy, and developed his own style. His writings are still used as models for calligraphy today. The restoration he advocated covered all forms of art. From Zhao Mengfu to Dong Qi Chang, Chinese painting had entered its heyday becoming a way for scholars to express personal feelings. This can be traced back to the restoration movement advocated by Zhao.
Poussin's classical paintings are highly regarded in France. There's even a school called Poussinism at the French Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture. Pour la France, le, celui qui fait le lien entre l'Italie et la France, c'est Poussin, qui est né en France, mais qui est un peintre italien. C'est-à-dire qu'il a passé l'essentiel de sa vie en Italie. Poussin est donc euh, retenu comme le grand maître du classicisme en France. Et il a influencé euh, les peintres euh, de ce qu'on appelle les académies. Il était un modèle, mais il n'a pas été le professeur réel. A hundred years later, when Jacques-Louis David studied at the Royal Academy, he too was influenced by Poussin. In winning the Rome Prize, David had sought out the ancient classics from Paris to Rome, just as Poussin had before him. Later, David painted the intervention of the Sabine women, based on the story depicted in Poussin's painting, The Rape of the Sabine Women. The Romans had children with the Sabine women. Seeking revenge, the Sabine men launched a war against the Romans. Seeing that their husbands, children, and fathers and brothers were fighting each other, the Sabine women rushed to stop the conflict. The dramatic scene is touching and passionate. Yet David cared more about how to freeze the moment. The painting's most powerful strength comes from the sculpture-like characters. It seems as if they are sculptures of ancient Roman heroes. Another master of classical painting from the school of Poussinism was Jean-Auguste Dominique Angra. He had also won the Rome Prize and had gone to Rome. He was obsessed with the Renaissance painter Raphael. The model for his painting, The Vow of Louis XIII, was Raphael's Sistine Madonna. Some contemporary critics said the imitation was meaningless. Yet Angra thought the opposite. He said, Look, who is there among the great men who has not imitated? Nothing is made of nothing. And the way good inventions are made is to familiarize yourself with those of others. The painting La Grande Odalisque was one of his bold attempts. At the time, people criticized the main character for being disproportioned, having at least three more vertebrae than ordinary people. And in the painting La Source, the female's body is at least two head lengths longer than normal women. Yet, Angra said, such adjustment was in accord with the classical elegance in his eyes. David and Angra continued to explore Poussin's classical painting techniques. To posterity, their painting style is known as neoclassicism. Chen Danqing also developed his understanding of art through years of painting and observing. He said that he had not truly understood Dong Qi Chang, a follower of Zhao, until the age of 50. Dong Qi Chang is a Chinese painter. The Chinese people have a word to describe this painting, which is Ma Nai. He said that he is a painter's painter. His painting is for the painter to see, the painter can understand his painting. Chen Danqing thought that Dong's landscape paintings covered all the features of Chinese painting through different dynasties. So he regarded Dong as a painter who recorded Chinese art history through his paintings. Whether Poussin, David, Angra, Zhao or Dong, 
These are just a few examples of people learning and innovating from tradition. Inventio 在这个返回的过程当中，你用你的智慧、你的想象力、你的表现力，啊，这个叫做创新。On one side in front of Chen are the paintings of Chinese masters like Zhao and Dong. On the other side are paintings of French classic masters like Poussin, David, and Angra. On one side is an artistic tradition carried on through ancient Greece, ancient Rome, the Renaissance and Classicism. On the other side are Chinese ink and wash paintings. We can't help wondering, are they connected in some way? If Eugene Delacroix expressed passion through death and slaughter, yet he was actually a quiet person. Xu Wei called himself Man of Ivy, but he was as irritable as a tiger. Both Delacroix and Xu created a passionate era, and each was regarded as the forerunner of Romanticism in their own country.